Well, here we are on the June 2011 Regents exam in physics. We're on page 9, questions 44 through 49. We're into the electricity ones. First one says, uh, question 44, the diagram below represents a circuit consisting of two resistors connected to a source of potential difference. The first thing you need to realize in this circuit is that the two resistors are connected in series. And resistors in series add. So a 10 ohm and a 20 ohm resistor are the same as a 30 ohm resistor. This voltage source sees a total resistance of 30 ohms. So the resistance is 30 ohms. The voltage is 120 volts. And the question is asking, what's the current through the 20 ohm resistor? Well, the current through one resistor is going to be the same as the current through the other. You can remember that because in a series circuit, the current in one place is equal to the current in another place in a third place current is a flow and if it's got to go through here well it's got to go through there there's no other place for it so there's the only destination so uh, we're looking for current resistance and voltage and we know that uh, resistance equals voltage divided by current resistance is voltage divided by current and so current is equal to voltage divided by resistance 120 volts divided by 30 ohms uh, I'm looking for about 4 amps, and that looks like choice 4. Question 45, the diagram below shows the magnetic field between uh, two magnetic poles A and B. Well, this is a vocabulary, a memory type of question. You have to realize that magnetic fields are drawn in the direction that a north monopole, if you just had a north, which way would it head? Well, it would head away from a north, and it would head towards the south. So that's the rule. It's by convention. Scientists get together and got to decide on something, so that's how they decide. The direction just a north would move in. So now the question is, which statement describes the polarity of magnetic poles A and B? A is north, and B is south. That looks good. A is south. Both A and B are north. Both A and B are south. Question 46, the diagram below represents a transverse water wave propagating towards the left, a cork is floating in the water. Well, transverse, the key vocabulary word in transverse is perpendicular. So if the wave is going this way, then the material is going up and down. So at point P, the material is either going to go up or down, one way or the other. So here's a cork. And if this wave is heading towards this cork, it's going down. Here's the cork. The wave would have to go down, and then up, and then down again. So if that was just going up and down, those are the only two choices. Down, and then up, and then down again. So let's see if that's a choice. In which direction will the cork move as the wave passes? Well down then up and down there it is definitely not left and right that would be a longitudinal wave moves this way parallel to the direction up then down then up now no. yes, that's it question 47 is another vocabulary one the diagram shows a series of wave fronts approaching an opening in a barrier point P is located on the opposite side somehow waves reach point P and they reach as a result of uh, a resonance. Uh, refraction is bending, going from one material to another. Reflection is bouncing. Diffraction is waves going around a barrier. We have a barrier, that's got to be diffraction. Key vocabulary word there, barrier. Question 48. The diagram below represents a standing wave. Standing wave, you send a wave one direction, it interferes with its reflection, a series of wave pulses. The number of nodes and antinodes. Again, vocabulary. These are nodes, regions of no movement. And there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of those. So six nodes. 
And these are the antinodes, regions of maximum amplitude. And there's one, two, three, four, five of those. Choice three is the correct answer. Question 49. A deuterium nucleus consists of one proton and one neutron. The quark composition of a deuterium nucleus is, well, this is kind of a vocabulary one, but we can get some help. In the section on the classification of matter, we're told that baryons are made of three quarks. We have to remember that protons and neutrons are, in fact, baryons. Sorry, vocabulary. Uh, so you got three quarks in there. And you've up and down quarks. And those are the two choices we've got, up quarks and down quarks. So a proton is positively charged. An up quark is positive two-thirds. Positive two-thirds. And um, a down quark is minus one-third. So a proton is made of two ups and a down for a total of uh, four-thirds minus one-third or three-thirds charge, which would be positive one. A neutron is made up of uh, one up quark, two-thirds, and two down quarks, and uh, for a total charge of uh, zero. So if I've got a proton and a neutron, I've got two, I've got three, ups and uh, three downs. So there's the answer. Yeah, uh, good luck with this. You just either have to remember it or I guess no, there's no trick to that. Sorry, gotta remember it. And just because it's only one question, I'm gonna do page 10 as well, question 50. The diagram below shows two waves traveling the same medium. Points A, B, C, and D are located along the rest position of the medium. The waves interfere to produce a resultant wave. So we're given two waves, and they're going to interfere to produce a resultant. And the question is asking, uh, the superposition of the waves produces the greatest positive displacement from its rest position. So uh, here's how you do it. You add their amplitudes. Vector addition of amplitudes. I did a video on this. Here's positive 1 and positive 2 for a result in a positive 3. Here at point B, we've got negative 1 and positive 2 for a result of positive 2. Here we've got positive 1 and negative 2 for a result of negative 2. And here we've got negative 1 and negative 2 for a result of negative 3. So we're asked for the greatest positive displacement that's going to be at... Point A. There you go.